Welcome back, everyone. This is Patrick Best, and we're going to be talking about getting started with bookkeeping. Welcome back, everyone. This is Patrick Best, tax attorney at Best Tax Solutions. Uh, This is actually a continuation episode, so if you did not see the main episode, uh, please look in the description. I will put the link below. Still with me is Joanne Lazier of Day One Accounting. Joanne, thanks for joining us again. Of course, thanks for having me. And we're going to be talking about getting started with bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be for people who maybe haven't been keeping their books or were doing it on their own in a very primitive manner. Um, Mm -hmm. We see Excel spreadsheets a lot, things like that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. they may be wondering, how do I get started? What do I do? What does that process look like? So you have a lot of experience in dealing with those types of companies, Joanne. So tell me, what does that process look like for you? Well, it, it, it depends. So the first thing that I do is I do a real deep interview with potential clients um, in, you know, before you even signed anything to see what's really going on. And um, I'm asking them about their business. Let's start off with, you know, tell me about your business. How long have you been around how do you get clients? Um, you know, how do they pay you? So I, I you know, I'm really kind of getting into um, the, the natural part of their business, you know, to kind of explain so that I can get an idea of how I can help them. You know, after that, you know, I'll give them some recommendations on what I would do. Um, and, you know, and they're light recommendations. And, you know, if you want me to help you, these are the things that we're going to need to do and we're going to need to fix. And I've gone through everything with them. So I know um, how it can work at this point. Once they sign up for me, it it begins. It begins with me really, truly diving in. Now I'm looking at your bank accounts to see how many bank accounts do you have? Let's get them, you know, onboarded. Okay, I need to to see them. I need to see the transactions go in and out of them. Uh, I'm asking them about their equipment. What do you use to make your product? You know, what, are the, what kinds of equipment, how many trucks do you have or vehicles? Um, your employees, of course, you know, that's important. I'll, you know, ask them, how do you, I'll, I have asked them, how do you, you know, go about, you know, uh, getting your sales? You know, so I want to know, do you keep accounts receivable and how do you keep track of it? So I'm getting, I'm, I'm going through all of the different elements that create the financials so that I can actually put a system together for them and that it can actually work. So that's pretty much how I start. Well, how do you deal with businesses that maybe haven't been keeping books or haven't been keeping the greatest books? They're scared or concerned. They're even, maybe even afraid to make the phone call to you. Mm. Uh, what, what do you say to those people? How do you, how do you handle that? Yeah, well, that's my little secret sauce there. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the, the fact is that we all have things that we were supposed to do and didn't do. We didn't do them right. The, there's no uh, blame in any of it. You know, so I really make people feel comfortable with where they're at right now. You know, and I let them know, that, you know, you can't keep beating yourself up. You know, you mentioned, you know, my slogan, which is, you know, you got to start somewhere. So start with day one. And the fact is that we do have to start somewhere. So the somewhere can't be all the blame and beating yourself up. It's got to be, well, let's, let's just start. Let's just begin. And, um, you know, I'll need you to cooperate with me. I'll explain to them that, you know, the fact is that you, you want to be really diligent with this and I'll give them a real estimate on how long I think it's going to take if they were very cooperative with me, because, You've seen it yourself where I can give you a list of things to do, but if you are just as procrastinating now as you were back then, you know, it's still not going to get done. So, um, you know, I explain that to them and the importance of it. And I become, in my opinion, I become a partner to them. Um, You know, I'm a concerned partner. You know, I'm concerned that we get this done and I'm concerned that we do it right and um, ultimately, I become someone who they trust, and uh, we were just talking just a little while ago. You know, I'm, I'm part of the group. I'm part of the team here. You know, so I sometimes I'm walking into your office like any other employee. You know, to gather things together, to pick up stuff from you, 
and I'll uh, peek into your office. Do you have a minute? And, you know, that kind of thing. So that's kind of how we begin and, and how, you know, I kind of develop my relationship with someone. Well, what if I haven't done my books in years, um, mm-hmm. but maybe I haven't even filed my tax returns in years because of that. Uh, I see that all the time. People come to me that I haven't filed my returns in 10 years or five years or whatever it may be. How do you make the determinations as to what you're going to do in terms of the bookkeeping cleanup? Right. Uh, how do we start? So, I mean, I mean people may at, at some point feel like they can't start because it's been too long already. How do we make those determinations? Well, first thing that I would do is call you. <laughs> you know, uh, if I come across a, a client that has not been in compliance with the IRS, I need to, to, to call you so that you can make some recommendations to me on where we should start and where we can, you know, cut things off. And as you see, I, I, a lot of times I'll talk to someone who you've recommended to me and uh, referred to me. And, um, you know, the next phone call after talking to them is back to you. So we want to talk to the person who uh, has been, um, to a person who can help them, uh, you know, file their tax returns. What is it that they need? And we want to do the best we can to get that information. You know, it's difficult, but, um, you know, I haven't seen it where it's 10 full years of not doing anything. You know, uh, maybe not a tax return, for instance, but you still have the paperwork. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's 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 difficult. It's it's that's a really difficult thing. Yeah. And um, it, it takes other it takes leveraging other professionals and all of us coming up with, uh, OK, this is what we're going to do. For that well, time. we do see it. I mean, there are people who call me first. Yeah, because they're worried about either the IRS is coming after them or they're just worried that the IRS will come after them. And I say, well, hold on a second. I can't do anything for you until we get your books in order. Right. Or, or they go to you and they say, well, I need to get my books in order. And you say, well, hold on a second. You haven't filed returns in, in right. six years or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, and, and, and at that point, you know, I want to know what you have been doing. You know, did you keep all your, your bank statements? I mean, we might be able to figure something out just using those. Well, you know, there's, there's always a solution. Or- yeah, there's always a solution. It just yeah, really depends. You shouldn't. So if you're watching this video and you haven't filed your taxes in 10 years, don't let that stop you. Uh, we fix that issue all the time. Yeah. Uh, there's a number of ways that we could do while not ideal. Uh, the IRS does, in many cases, allow us to use uh, industry standards and things like that to, to make deductions. Mm-hmm. We can pull your 1099 transcripts and things. So if you wanted to know what did I get from merchant services 10 years ago, I, I could find that out for you, actually, whether you have the 1099 or not. And then Joanne and I can kind of rebuild your books depending on how far back we need to go. Um, right. we, we can rebuild it and start you fresh. Uh, so, and we may pick a date so that like, for example, now we're recording this in April of 2020. At this point, a lot of our clients are looking back to January 1st and we're just trying to reconstruct 2020 for right now. Right. Um, but we work together to kind of develop a solution. I think you're right. You need that that group of professionals uh, yeah. who are going to help you make that determination, but it's not something you should be scared of. Exactly. Exactly. And remember that you are calling on professionals and the difference between a DIY approach versus, you know, coming to one of us uh, who are professionals is we surround ourselves with experts. This is not something that I can possibly do by myself without asking someone who's gone through it. Uh, what would you do? Where do we start? And that kind of thing. So you are, um, you're, you're looking at a service that we are all about to give you. And that service is not only our experience, but the experience of the ex- experts that we surround ourselves with. Yeah, we take a lot of the burden on for you as well. So while you may have been concerned to do all this on your own, all, all the heavy lifting is going to be done by people who know what they're doing. Exactly. Which is important. Um, another big concern for people in this getting started process, I think, is cost. And I know, so cost varies, obviously, depending on how much you're doing. Um, but without discussing the actual fees, because each case is a case by case basis, I think it's important to note for people that hiring you or hiring me or whatever it may be is always going to be cheaper than the alternative, which is doing nothing. Right, exactly, exactly. And well, or, and also in your case too, and this is why I love what you do, but you act as an outsourced accounting department. Yes. So you, you are going to be cheaper 
10 out of 10 times than hiring a full-time person to sit in your office and do this for you. Exactly. Exactly. And not only that, but you have someone who has some business background too. So, you know, I've, I've had people who think that they have an accounting department because they hired someone who's never done accounting before. Maybe they're the receptionist. And so you want her to be doing or him to be doing the, you know, the bookkeeping. And what you don't realize is that, um, and I'll give you a, a really good for instance. I, I had someone who, who um, I went into his business and uh, he had hired a paralegal to be his admin person. And that person had said that they've done payroll before. Well, that same person wasn't paying their payroll tax. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had to explain to them that, you know, when people tell you that they've done payroll before, they might just be talking about that they've gathered the timesheets together and they've input it someplace. That's not doing payroll, you know, and it's the same with bookkeeping as well. You're not bookkeeping if you write somebody a check or if you deposit somebody's, you know, check into the bank. That's not bookkeeping. So um, you have to kind of understand that you are hiring a professional to do something that um, we do. This is, this is the business. This is what I've done for years. Right. And, you know, it, the cost is, is, is the cost. It's, it's not nearly what that person is costing you. Because eventually when the IRS figures out that you uh, didn't file your taxes for your payroll taxes, they're going to do a payroll audit. So it's well, kind of right. like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're always saving money. I mean, it, people, get, people get concerned about, oh, I can't possibly pay somebody to do this for me. But it's always cheaper because mm -hmm. if you like every service we do, mm -hmm. uh, even I'll, I'll take it as simple as tax prep. Mm -hmm. If you hire me to do your tax returns, it is more expensive if your books are a mess. Right. Whereas if, if all I have to do is call Joanne and say, Joanne, can I have this company's profit and loss statement for 2019? She prints it out for me, sends it over to me. The cost on your tax prep goes down. Yeah. So it, you're saving money by doing this and people don't realize the cost of inaction, the cost of doing nothing. Exactly. I liken it sometimes to a mechanic. You know, a lot of times when people don't um, understand something or they don't do it, they don't really have respect for it. So you walk into a mechanic and you have a problem with your car and the mechanic tells you this is how much it's going to cost. And because you have an idea of what's expensive, you might think that, gosh, that's really way out of line. Let me see if I can go on YouTube and fix the problem. Well, the fact of the matter is that your mechanic not only knows what to do, they've got all the machinery and all the equipment and all the labor that's needed in order to do this. So recognize that your mechanic isn't necessarily, you know, some $7 an hour person who, you know, you know you're asking for them to shuffle some cards for you. You hired a professional who has all the equipment and all the resources to fix your car correctly as opposed well, to there, going to YouTube. <laughs> there's, well, there's also opportunity costs because if you, let's mm -hmm. say we've been using a plumber as an example, but a plumber mm -hmm. hires you to help and he determines, oh, well, geez, I might as well just do this myself. Every hour he spends on his books is one less hour that he's out in the field working on yeah. someone's plumbing it makes sense for him to hire someone to do the things that they are good at so that he can right. go out and do the things that he is good at. And people exactly. always forget that as well. Exactly. Not to mention they, they do it wrong all the time. So that's the other problem. <laughs> all the time. I don't care if you've got a YouTube video handy, you're going to do right. it wrong. <laughs> well, a couple, a couple other things that hiring a professional gives you too is I, you're an outsourced accounting department for people. You're not an employee, which means they're not paying you health insurance. Mm -mm. They're not paying your retirement account for you. They're paying you whatever your fee is. And then that's the end of it. They don't have to worry about laying you off. They don't have to do any of these things that you would have to do with employees, which makes everything simpler for them. Exactly. Plus I have my own employees. So the fact of the matter is that you're hiring a team. This isn't right. me as an outsourced accounting department doing it on my own. So I have, again, resources that you don't have to make sure that things are done correctly. Right. And to hire that team in-house would just be astronomically expensive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. I used to have a slogan that says, grow your empire, not your accounting department. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And 
Uh, <laughs> you mentioned earlier, and again, that the fact that we are professionals, the fact that this is what we do for a living also gives one added layer of comfort, I'd say, which is if I screw up, I'm responsible. Mm. Whereas if you're doing your own taxes and you screw up, you're responsible. And that's a big difference because a, you don't necessarily have experience doing your own tax returns. Mm -hmm. uh, and B, if you have no one else to blame, you're sitting holding the bag when the IRS comes knocking. And I think that that's another important part of this, why hiring a professional is important. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I pay to make sure that I'm insured and bonded and, you know, I have all of that um, for you. And of course, it behooves me to ensure that I do it all right. You know, I'm not, you know, so yeah, that is definitely a layer of comfort. Great. Well, Joanne, thanks again for joining us. Uh, if you are interested in, in watching the other videos that we've done, I am going to put the uh, link in the description below. So please watch all those other videos. I will put Joanne's contact information below if you're looking to contact her. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.